Welcome to today's show. Tucson Lux Living features exceptional products and services for the area's top consumers, bringing together high-end real estate, business, money, and lifestyle. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer, local realtor supporting the area's business professionals with their personal real estate needs. Today, I have a delightful treat for everyone. She is a dear friend of mine and an incredibly talented artist, Marlene Sanchez. Welcome to the show, Marlene. Thank you so much, Alicia. It's really, it's really a pleasure to be here and be able to have a conversation with you around this topic, which carries so much meaning. It is a great topic because we all have a special place in our heart for art, some more than others, but there's something to be said about our draw to art. As human beings, we are drawn to art and we all have our are your own unique preferences and taste, but the right art in our homes can completely transform the way that it feels. And as an artist, I know that you really get into just this state of alignment when you are creating pieces for your clients and it just comes through you. Now that's what we're talking about with that energy and about you, know, you could look at um, you know that they actually have done done studies on you know certain pieces of famous art and the emotion that it evokes and how it affects human psychology and there's no denying that it triggers certain feelings within us. So I'd love for you to share what are what are your thoughts on that because I mean you are living it you're living it every day when you are creating art for yourself or for your clients exactly oh my gosh perfect perfect question um let's talk about let's go the caves what was found in them art representation of what was meaningful and needed for the people that inhabited them from our very core as human beings, we have the need to live with meaning and see that meaning in our surroundings. So for me, it's an amazing, amazing pleasure and honor to be an artist, to be somebody that can receive what is needed from someone and um, listen to their words, of course, but there's something else going on behind their words, their attitudes, their feelings. And the grace has given me the capacity to tune into that. And I started feeling that at a very young age. And I started working with my, my, my work in ceramics. And clay is extremely visceral. So a lot of the things in 3D, starting from very small sculptures of, of children, to animals and all kinds of things, I started feeling my connection with depicting imagery and what it meant for me to have the ability to see that as something that was actually going to inform me about my own perspective, that connection that we all have. So moving it forward to present day, and as I sit with somebody that is considering a piece from my collection or a specific piece for them, what I really focus on is the conversation. What happened in that place that you want me to paint? What, what, makes, what does it make you feel? And we will just talk about the events or what surrounds it or a memory or something that went on that clearly begs to be conserved. And it really hopes to be lived with in a beckoning way in the environment. That's why I think art for the, art for the home is so important because it's the way to really have a conversation with those elements that connect you to who you are in a way that you don't re yet recognize literally in its full blossom. You know, you have some sense about what it is, but when you get to live with something at home, you are making the choice of actually having a conversation with that piece on a daily basis. 
there will be, and I hear it from my clients, there, Marlene, I didn't realize that that was there. I I'd never saw that before. Wow. Now I see it. So there are all these recognitions through time as they live with a piece. And also it, it, it makes a difference as to where you place it because light is going to come in. At different times of the day, you'll be in a different mood. The painting will be in a different mood because of the light. And it's a conversation that is just not a one-off. It continually starts immersing you in the presence of the conversation of what you wanted to bring to it and the, the essence of that piece in itself, what I'm able to give to you as your chosen artist. So that so is very rich. Yes, let's talk a little bit more about some of the types of um, pieces that people are contracting you to do. So that our audience who may not have previously seen any of your work before can get a, a better sense of what, what does Marlene do? Thank you. Um, well, one of the, <laughs> it's like all of them are saying, talk about me. <laughs> Let's talk about um, Luke, um, Luke in the water. It's the name of the painting. Look in the water, it was a commission that um, someone took a trip to California. They had a very young child and the child had a boogie board and was in the ocean and there were waves behind him in a clouded, rather threatening or intense, um, sky beyond him and um, but the child was totally willing to step out into the next wave anchoring himself to the boogie board he was very young probably around four or five to get in the water so when she showed me this picture she says you know I just really love this picture can you do this I Immediately my heart just soared and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, for me, it became a travel. It was exactly that. It was the adventure of all of the child in us to go out there with taking risks and not knowing what's going on. And, and yes, it may be sunny, but okay, there might be some dark skies and clouds that come through, but that's not gonna stop us because we are just gonna be moving forward with our boogie boards and what we feel safe with. And we're just gonna plow through and float and deal with the dance of the water in us. That's really what started, you know, moving me in this painting. And I just, every time I had that conversation with that, that the, paint, the paints to produce this, it just came along. And I'm like looking at the painting and I'm almost done. And I'm like, gosh, you know, she, he really is having a lot of fun out there. But I just, it came in and I just, right at the edge of it, I painted a seagull, just a tiny little seagull. And I'm like, well, where did that come from? I have no, like, it's not in the picture. Wait a second. And, and it, it was really amazing how um, it was such a symbol to paint a seagull with him. In a way, for me, is you know, it's 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 a metaphoric as a spirit that keeps us company, that flies with us regardless of what we're doing. And so, you know, it is a commission. I did have the picture. Is it going to be exactly the same? They did not hire me to take a picture. They asked me to produce a work of art, a painting that was inspired by the connection of the conversation in the visual image that I was granted. So when I, when she received the piece, uh, she, she just loved it. And, uh, and she said, 
yeah, I see, I see the seagull. Thank you. And uh, I just really felt that that was appropriate. And, and I said, well, it wasn't, she says, I love it. Thank you. And so that's the connection. That's why I think that those conversations, if, if I didn't have any relationship or there wasn't that depth in the relationship that I had with her, there was no way that I could feel that I was going to be granted the um, allowance of, of saying my piece and, and, and just knowing that the trust of our connection was going to make it so. And so that was lovely. Yeah, that's beautiful. And there's something to be said about the spirit of an artist. <laughs> and that is why we love art so much is because it does embody the essence of the artists that that work, you know, that energy is channeling through. When you look at the work of a specific artist, you it has a feeling, it, it embodies a certain essence. And I think that that is why some pieces are so incredibly valuable. If you were just looking at it for the materials, even for the hours that were put into creating that piece of art, it's not justifiable. It doesn't, it doesn't add up. But when you can evoke so much emotion and, you know, we're hearing now that times are changing. And for a lot of people, experience is the new luxury. It's not about all of the things. It's not about all of the, all of the assets or just about the net worth. It is about the richness of the experience. That is something that sure money can buy to a certain extent, but not really, you know, because it is, it's available to everyone. Uh, and art is definitely an experiential thing, but it's not just a single experience. It's an experience that we have over and over and over. Exactly. It makes, it, it, your words just touched on a lot of reasons why people surround themselves with art. And one that has come up a lot historically is investment. I'm going to buy from this artist that will be valued in several years, this and that. It becomes this relationship to the value, the monetary value. And, and that's, that's fine. That, that is fine. But there's also a piece of the investment of yourself. If you don't feel connected and you are going to bank on like, go to the stock market and do your game about like picking up what is going to be valuable. If you're doing that with art and maybe you have a great art consultant and they can steer you, well, that's fine. And even if you accept somebody's voice as your expert in that and you take that piece of artwork home, if that Inevitably, you're going to look at that piece with your hopes, your expectations, your questioning or your delight. You are going to have all these emotions around it and, and constantly think about your investment. The investment importance is your personal investment. How did you create your wealth? You didn't just you didn't just pop something and it, maybe it was magical. Maybe you are not that familiar with your, with your conscious connection about how you became so successful. When you're choosing a piece of artwork, that's the thing. You can become really conscious about what it is. You have the opportunity to be triggered and moved and exalted or appalled and repelled. And that's your choice. And so it's really important for you to know that that piece that you're bringing to your home has to have that radiance, that connection, that in, immediate 
connection with your soul. And that's what really is. When we're looking at something, is tapping into something that we don't have yet words for or concepts for. We are just being touched. It's intimate. It's to the core. It's like music. When you hear something and immediately your body starts moving, there is nothing that's going to stop you if, you know, we're all kinesthetic. In art, in visual art, there's something that moves inside that just, just co it's compelling. And it's like, I want that. So it's interesting. And so that's, so like, okay, when well, somebody comes to me, it's like, oh, Marlene, I want this painting. It's like, how am I going to ensure that that person is going to get this? Oh my God, that's, that's my highest goal is that I can provide this magnificent service to this individuals that, that are looking for this. That's my service. How can I? So, you know, how does a builder build something by working at it all the time, by constantly being in that studio, by honing your skills, by doing the best that you can with every day and every moment that you have to be able to be conscious of that act of making art. That's, you know, I've been, since six years old, I've been bitten by this in so many forms. So the other gift is the gift of conversation, the gift of being able to be silent when it's necessary for words to take place. So when somebody works with me, it's really important to more than talk, listen. Listen to how they move, listen to what their, what their emphasis is. Understand that that's the move over their shoulders or moving forward or moving back is actually incredible information. And that's what I really look for in the emotive response. When I work with someone, we have several points at which we will talk again, we'll have the work and we reference, there will be three points of consult from the beginning of the work to the end of the work. And you know, there's just a process that I have when I'm doing this service. And it works because people will have, oh, well, what about this and what about that? And I'll understand where we're going and we'll revisit conversation and we'll move forward. I'll tell you, had a, <laughs> had a wonderful experience with uh, my friend Jenny. And she lives, she's a, she's a direct, she's, she's lives in Long Island and uh, Oh my God, she, she swims with the sharks. She's a ICU nurse with, throughout this pandemic. She has been serving in four layers worth. She is somebody that goes to the depths of life. And she goes like, Marlene, I really want this painting. And you know, it's like, it's, we have to go up north to uh, Bodega Bay. That's where we went. To, I have the pictures that I want. It's like, oh, that's great. That's great. Okay, let's do it. So she was scheduled to come out here to California. And, and I said, okay, well, she says, Marlene, come over here. We'll stay at the inn. And, you know, I said, okay, I'll bring my camera. Oh, okay, okay. So we spent the day at the beach and I took my camera and I was taking photographs and all this stuff. And then we were talking. We, it, it was the best circumstance to talk about what she wanted and, and pay attention to the surf and listen to her. And we were friends. So we got to know each other much better. And at the end of the conversation, she goes, forget about my pictures. We have what we want in your camera. And then I went back, I started in my, into the painting and then we had a conversation and she goes, then I showed her where I was and I said, oh, she said, no, 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 Marlene. I, I, no, that's not what I want. I said, okay, Jenny, let, let's talk about this. I, I, I want darkness. I want the darkest painting. If somebody's scared of that painting, that's painting, that's the painting that I want. I said, oh, okay. See this photograph? This one that you took, it was almost dusk. I said, mm-hmm. That's the one. I'm not interested in the rock. Oh, I thought that you wanted. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, gotcha. I said, well, just blank out. I said, no, no, no. No worries, Jenny. The story that I told already is that it's been told. I so I started again, I did another one. And she just, when I finished it, she says, oh my God, that's exactly 
what I was feeling. That, you know, it's it's wonderful. It's like moonlight, it's really dark, but it has like almost like the sunset, but just a little bit of orange and in, in, in light at the end. And all you see is, you know, maybe some shark is coming around, maybe. <laughs> it's like because it's so dark, right? And it's just, it's, it's a marvelous, marvelous uh, a painting in that you really feel that you're in that dark night where you have some hope and there's that, not, there's that light that still there's a day coming or there's just end of the day. And that's what she really wanted. She says, there's always hope. It doesn't matter how dark the situation is. So I love this painting and I'm just so happy. It's just, this exactly what I wanted. I said, okay. <laughs> so that was an amazing, uh, you know, response. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the types of paintings that you do. So some people are very abstract, others are certainly much more realistic. And then of course, you know, there's everything in between. Um, some people are wonderful at portraits, other people great at nature, but don't dare, you know, do a, a human body. <laughs> so where's your sweet spot, Marlene? What do you, what do you love working on and what flows through you the best? water. <laughs> I love uh, the ocean, definitely. I also really love flowers, just flowers and um, nature, a lot of nature. I like, I do like doing portraits. Um, and those are, I, I say that they can be a challenge because people have very specific things about what they see in themselves and when an artist depicts what the artist sees, it might not match. It might not, if, if you're looking at, I'm very good at doing, uh, let's see. Actually, let's talk about another commission. My orthodontist. <laughs> So he, he said, Marlene, I want a painting of this office. And, um, and I just, I, I, just I, I want what it looks like on a day, today. And I said, great. So I came in with my camera and took pictures. And from different reference points. And there were, I wanted to do three, I wanted to do a woman that has been working with him for almost four years. Uh, she was amazing. I mean, she was my um, support for a while and it was just wonderful person. And uh, Dr. Kukalan, and um, I wanted to paint her and then a patient. And um, the portraits, when I deliver the painting, one of the things that I love to do is to go and take the painting and not, they don't know that I'm, that, that I'm coming. And um, I just take the painting. I said, hey, you know, here it is. And I'll know immediately by a facial expression what they're feeling. I don't like preparing people. I just say, okay, this is what it is. And immediately when he first saw it, it's like, oh my God. And uh, he says, I look 10 years younger than I am. <laughs> and I said, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, yes, yes, yes. But this, this, I said, yeah, are you done? And I said, well, I wanted you to look at it, but I just, you know, I want to see if, if that, this is what you were thinking about. And he was very, very happy. She, I actually made a small copy, not a painting copy, but a nice print for Annie. So it was good. It was good. I felt comfortable with that. And, um, so I know that I can paint and I can do a likeness for sure. I've been trained in it. I am, I know how people, how, because I know I'm really sensitive and I really tread in a lot of, of, of sensitivity with the other person. And I, times when I've done drawings for other people about like their mother or like a, a photograph that they've done, that they, they brought for me to do. Um, it just is, 
really special how like her eyes are not that way or or the look she doesn't look a certain way and and especially if it's a commemorative piece and uh, so I'll go back and I'll look and I'll understand what the feeling is especially it's like well she looks really serious and so I'll look at the aspects of the of the physique that will reflect the muscle situation what are the what are the muscles that are moving? How is my, you know, how, how am I depicting that? And where can I make a change to move this forward? That's why the visits are so important. Um, and then after she she saw it and she she showed it to a lot of people, and um, they said, you know, this is this is excellent. She says, oh. I said, okay. But you could still feel that she just, she, it was her mom. She loved her mom and this was something. So we worked through that. And also we talked about her mom and that's the thing. We talked about her mom, her relationship to her mom, what was going on with her at the time where the, where the, you know, where the photograph was taken. And this was a very old photograph. So it didn't give me a lot of detail. So I piece things I collage her emotion, her information with what I have. And then I take some of her features of her eyes. And people actually said that. She says, it looks like you. And she's like, really? And she's, yeah. So they started recognizing her in, her, in the mom's drawing, although she never really say, said that. But that was a really interesting to me to be able to see that other people were making references of her in her mom's drawing. So I knew that I had hit the mark of that sense of recognition, but it didn't necessarily come from her directly because she was very focused on what the picture was. So community is always helpful. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I love that. So we've talked a little bit about the energy and the essence and the emotion of art. And of course, we've gone into a little bit more specifics about your style and your experiences. Mm -hmm. Each artist is, is such an individual. You know, I know, I know you very, very well. And I know many other artists as well. And I mean, each of us as individuals are so unique, so unique. But there's something to be said about artistic people. <laughs> there's a, a very strong, strong energy that emanates from my, my artistic friends, usually very creative. And, you know, I, in my, in my other business for my, my coaching practice, I work with a lot of successful business people. And so I see a lot of that very, you know, type A personality, the very logical thinking uh, type of individual. And um, there's certainly some, some distinct differences in terms of somebody who is highly artistic versus somebody who is um, perhaps more intellectual, or there may be, um, you know, we might say even in some instances, even a little bit more grounded, although I wouldn't say that there's anything wrong with allowing yourself to be in the flow of your artistic creativity, because that's what makes you so damn good at what you do. And so being able to tap into the essence of who is Marlene, you know, is such a beautiful thing because how many of us have experienced beautiful artwork and never had the experience of the, the creator, you know, the person behind the work. So I love that you shared that with us today and I would love to have you, just like with all of my guests, share with us any final words. And before you do that, I also want you to uh, share your website so people can see some of your art and they can get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, it's Marlene Sanchez Fine Art. 
Uh, I uh, have a current website there where you can definitely find my work and um, you will also find a variety of mediums there. I'm currently, um, just so that uh, you know, it'll be updated. I'm currently going through a growth process, right? <laughs> Tremendous. So everything is um, being moved forward uh, in a more, um, more, more aligned with- I'm a, More become. alignment, more eloquent <laughs> as far as my social media and my website. My alignment is, uh, is, is being primed. And um, you spoke about the grounding and you spoke about how important and, and sometimes when um, the vision of artists in flight, not grounded on this other plane or other, you know, <laughs> they are not unlike programmers in many ways <laughs> because they're very crazy people too this, this it's all creative I always say well I'm not an artist it's like well you're not an, an artist that you're used to thinking about you being an artist but if you have created anything that with your hands with your mind with with whatever it is with the keyboard you have tapped into some sort of vision that you have trained yourself to be able to be fluid in and getting the pace flowing with that so that you can actually maneuver that real. So whether that from the outside looks to you as something that other people are not, you know, where are they anchoring to? That's just really what it is. It's a question of the anchor. For a lot of people, for me, um, yes, there. As an artist, I'm pulling from so many references when I am actually working. When you're looking at me, I'm probably already at the beach, or I'm looking at a certain shell, or I'm looking at the sky, or I'm looking where is she sounding like. I'm thinking of a piece of music, but sometimes I'm just really quiet and. And it, it's all going on and I'm just present. And in a way, when I work with someone, it's a meditation because I'm just observing what they're giving me and I'm just allowing it to just be like the seashore and allow the waves to come in and give me what they want to give me at the rhythm where they want to give me. And I'm just the sand and I'm there absorbing. At the end of the day, I have all the water that I need and, and, and then I'll go to work. Um, so I, I anchor myself in order to continue to do this work and to be able to like clear my palate. Is for me as an artist, I need, I need a very strong spiritual practice. I need to understand that what I see as beauty is not necessarily how somebody else sees what they need. And if I am of service, I need to understand that what's happening is a conversation. And that is what needs to happen. And people that work with me recognize that that's what I'm going to ask. And it's, it's been really interesting, the conversations that I've had with people, because they reveal something about themselves as I'm asking about what they want me to do. And so it's the conversation will continue when you have your piece of work at home. That's really what it is. You'll, you'll be able to like really know. And again, in the meetings that we will have as, as we move throughout the work. But that's really the essence of it. I, it's about listening and about really coming from the space of this is, this is years of practice, years of endeavoring and years of working on self-portraits, on the sea, on interiors, on still life and now I get to you get to have that as a resource you get to love have that. me to do love that. that just like any profession there is the foundation which is your skills that is the the technical side of your craft whatever it is doesn't matter what business you're in what industry you're in you've got to be good at what you do you need to have mastered your basics but then you take it to that next level when you 
bring in your, your own energy. And the more you are congruent with yourself and the more you love what you do, that's what separates someone who is technically good at what they do from someone who is absolutely extraordinary. And I would say, Marlene, I think you are extraordinary. (laughs) Thank you so much. I really so appreciate that. With that, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time and energy with us. And I want to thank everyone who has tuned in and make sure you subscribe for more amazing interviews with amazing people. Thank you so much.